Today we will learn how to implement Apple login in websites. We will use JavaScript for the front end and Flask which is a Python framework for the back end. If you are not familiar with Flask, it's a popular Python framework for developing web applications. We will only be using it for sending requests and receiving responses. And uh, our main program is written in regular Python and JavaScript. However, in case if you want to see this uh, with any other framework or programming language, please write in the comment section. I'll try to make uh, videos in those technologies and frameworks. Coming back to Apple Login, it is considered to be the most complicated social media login implementation on the websites. And as developers, many of us might have already implemented it. In my experience, uh, most developers do it incorrect and the main reason is lack of developer documentation from Apple side. So I'll try to explain every step uh, involved in the implementation in simple terms in this video. Uh, hope you will enjoy it. Um, if you like it, please uh, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. All right then, let's start coding. So I have uh, created a virtual environment here and uh, I'll open the source code in VS editor. So it, this is the front end where we will display the login with Apple button. So the first step is to import uh, Apple SDK from here and then we have this div that will show the login with uh, Apple button. Here we are initializing the Apple SDK. Uh, we need to pass the client ID that we will create soon. And then the redirect uh, URI. Redirect URI is the URI where Apple will return back the user. So in case if you have a website, right, the return URI should be your website because when the user hits the login with Apple button, uh, a pop-up or a new tab will open where user will need to authenticate themselves on an Apple website and then Apple after uh, authenticated uh, the user successfully will return the URL back to your website. So this is the pop-up. So there are two mechanisms. One is uh, when the user clicks on the login button a new tab will open where user will authenticate themselves. The second mechanism is a uh, pop-up one where uh, user never leaves your website and rather the login with Apple uh, button opens the authentication process in a pop-up. So we are going to use this. You can choose to uh, you know, keep it uh, as false and then the authentication process will happen in the separate tab. The next step is to add two event listeners. One is when the authentication with Apple is successful and then the second is when the authentication uh, with the Apple is failed. Uh, I'm not going to use it much. This is just to see if your uh, if uh, Apple is returning the success or the failure responses. Uh, from their side. The main logic is written here where we are initializing our uh, Apple ID button and then we are binding an event here which is a which is the click event and uh, inside this function we have this uh, Apple ID auth dot sign in function which is basically to uh, invoke the sign in uh, functionality. And when the sign-in functionality is complete, uh, all the data returned from Apple side will be stored in the data variable. Um, I am logging this uh, variable here and uh, fetching the ID token value from the Apple response. This ID token is basically a JWT token that we are going to uh, see uh, in, uh, in our video. And this JWT token is then sent to our back office backend code. And uh, in the backend, we validate the authenticity of the token. 
fetch the user information and then uh, complete the sign-in process so in order to do that I am creating a form data object here and uh, adding a val variable token and passing the token value to this uh, variable the code to handle the backend part will be written uh, separately for now what we are going to do is we are going to see how uh, how we are re uh, receiving this token information from the apple side so as i told you in the beginning you need to have a developer account with apple so i have this account here i'll create an identifier here so as you can see we will be creating a service id which is for each website that uses sign in with apple so let's click here continue description sign in with apple demo let's add some identifier here rakesh demo and then apple login this should be a, a unique identifier by the way I'll click on register all right now I will click here I'll enable this here I'll need to add the domain and subdomain and the return URL this return URL should be exactly the same no space no extra slashes it should be exactly the same now since we are uh, running our application on the local host uh, uh, we need to make our local host as a public URL and in order to do that we will be using ngrock you can read more about ngrock uh, later for now let me first uh, run our application Auth is the application that I have created as you can see from the source code this is the authentication app so our local host is running on port 5000 we will now run the ng rock server on 5000 port number okay so you can see we have received a public URL from here which maps to the localhost 5000 port let's open this url okay right now it's showing not found but let's see if uh, okay yeah so we are receiving the request here now since our application is in auth i'll hit this button so right now you don't see anything because we haven't configured it yet so let's uh, start the configuration process i'll copy this url i'll go here i'll remove this as we just need the domain here and here we will uh, enter the complete uh, return url i'll click on save done continue now i will come back to our source code i'll add the redirect url is this and then the client id that we had created was com.rakesh.apple.login okay so it's not working at the moment we will need to restart our flask server first let's restart it and go to the browser again all right so now we see this sign in with apple button that means our configuration is done properly so far now let's try to since we have the redirect URI let's try to let's first open the console and hit the sign in with Apple button continue okay let's try again because sometimes it takes time uh, all right 
so it works successfully and now we have this token information as you can see let's copy this token information and go to jwt.io because this is a jwt token what we are going to do here is see what this is returning this is very important to check the header because uh, you know we need to understand what algorithm and what key uh, index was used to sign this uh, JWT token now this is the payload as you can see uh, we are receiving the uh, Apple ID for the user this is the email and it says email verified to is private email to so whenever you uh, use the Apple login uh, Apple will generally ask you whether you want to share your original email with the user with the website or not if you choose as uh, hide my email uh, option then it will not uh, return the actual email address rather it will send a dummy email address that you can see here however any emails that is sent to this email address will be actually forwarded to uh, forwarded to your uh, real uh, email account so you don't have to worry about it now now that we have uh, our token ready let's see how the backend processing would work so i'll come uncomment uh, this code we don't need the header so <coughs> let me copy this url here and paste so now we will see our backend handling the token so i'll clear the console i'll click here okay i think i'll need to restart my flask server again let's refresh the page click again continue okay so our api is also called here as you can see now if we see the response it says exception occur so let's go to the backend code and try to understand what is happening there so in our backend in this uh, auth.py file uh, this is a generic uh, flask way of uh, handling the request and response so all you need to understand here is that you know this uh, login request is uh, accepting both the get and post requests when the get request is uh, used uh, it will return the login.html file that we have already seen here if the post request uh, is used then we are calling the app uh, authentication mechanism all right so what we are doing here is we are finding the token from the request body and then we are passing this uh, token to apple resolver class that i have written here let me show you that also so what this apple uh, resolver class uh, doing is it is first uh, you know uh, we have we are calling this function so what it does is it goes to the apple id dot apple dot com uh, and then auth keys let me show you the url as well and why we need it so basically this website returns all the key id and the algorithm that is used to uh, sign the jwt token along with the public key so this key will be used to decrypt the token now the important part is if you refresh this page again right now you're seeing this f uh, h6 b s 8 c k id on top but when you refresh it you will see another one so this is the uh, critical part the fh6 that we had seen earlier is now on the second step 
and if you look at the JWT token, you will see that F at six BS eight uh, BS eight C is the KID that was used to sign the algorithm. That means we need to from this key uh, from this key and uh, algorithm information, we need to find the right key ID and corresponding public keys to decrypt our JWT token. So in order to do that, what we are doing here is we are finding all the information from this domain. And then from here, we are actually finding the right public key, right? So if I look at this function, you will see that we are looping through all the keys that we receive from the server and then trying to find out the key ID that matches with our uh, headers key ID and then we are returning the corresponding key this is the most critical part this is where you know most of the developers fail now this is rest of the part is to decode uh, the token I'll upload this code on github and you can uh, dig deeper to understand each and every line but the generic concept is uh, to divide this process into two steps first is to find out the uh, right key from Apple website and then use that key to decode uh, our JWT token now uh, this JWT token as you can see is using a different uh, audience so we need to check what are correct audience value is so we will go here and we will paste it like this and then in return it will give us the actual email address of the user you can fetch more information but we are gonna stick to the email part only for now let me restart the server again and refresh this page click on this All right, so this time our login function is called and you can see the email address that we have received from the Apple site. Now, if you copy this email from here and go to this JWT token, you will see that this email address is the same that we have received in the JWT token. All right, so we have successfully completed the uh, Apple login functionality. Obviously, this is not the complete example. You will need to initialize session uh, or if you are using with back and in front and you might probably need to return another JWT token which is from your platform for your front end whether it is uh, the React or Angular front end or, or it is an application. Uh, and obviously, you will need to store this information in your database in case uh, if the um, user is not registered on the platform. So but this this example should definitely give you a lot of idea as to how apple login works and uh, i hope you may you have enjoyed the video uh, if you have any suggestions please feel free to write in the comment section i'd be happy to uh, improve it um, in the next video and if you want to see it uh, happening in any other language php uh, or any other language please uh, write in the comment section i'll try to uh, create another video in the corresponding languages thank you so much for watching this video uh, see you soon in the next video bye